the five minutes? Five minutes. Five minutes. We alone. There's no one under the bed, is there? How much does this cost them? 150. Bargain. Have I ever told you my favorite Roy Chubby Brown joke? This kid comes home from school and he says, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. What's a cunt? His old man looks at him and says, son, come on, how old are you now? You know how old I am, Dad. I'm 10. All right, come with me. So he takes the kid upstairs. His mother's having a nap. They sneak into the room, throw back the duvet cover, lift up the nightly. And he says, son, you see that black triangle? That's a fanny. Your mother's a cunt. No? Not funny. I'd rather go to a funeral than a wedding. At a wedding, everyone's supposed to be having the greatest day of their lives, and they never do. At a funeral, no one expects to have a wonderful day, so it usually turns out pretty nice. Why didn't we just shake hands and say, okay, it's a deal? Why did you put us through this circus? Why did you insist on making a big thing out of it with a crowd of people you wish you never had to even talk to? And they never say till death do his part anymore. Did you know that? So it seems like no one's promising much of anything to anyone these days. Before eating them with icing sugar. They've caramelised really well. I think we'll take them off now. Eh? Not my clothes, the plums. Thank goodness for that. He then adds hot cream to eggs and sugar before placing the plums into ramekins and pouring on the mixture. Johnny Burgess says hello. You remember Johnny, don't you? You might think his face on TV for two minutes after. Just turned up out of blue. Invited himself. Wearing the same suit I think he wore for the dead. Gave a little to the cameras about how much we were just made for each other. He always wanted to be on TV. Only joined the Order of Malta and hoped he'd see himself at the football matches. Look, just come back to George's and cut the cake. No. Cut the cake for the cameras and then we can talk. No. We agreed to, Sam. We signed a fucking contract. They filmed us signing the contract. You and me, come on. All the guests are waiting for us. Fuck them. Yeah, fuck them. Today's an important day and they want to share in it, so fuck them. And leave time before the misery begins. What misery? All of us. Please, don't start now. I'm worried about everything. How can you not see this? I'm full of anxiety all the time. All the fucking time. About what? Everything. About what I eat. About how much sleep I get. About what people think of me. About money. About the salon. About stock and laying off staff and lying about what I spend on fluoride in the water. And if there's enough petrol in the tank and if you should have by not to go washing powder. Did we pick the right curtains for the living room and having children and whether they will be Come on, we haven't even pick? talked about kids. What school should we send them to? Is Tullamore safe and heart attacks and cancer even dying suddenly being hit by cars or buses or crashing airplanes, shot or stabbed in the back alley in the middle of the night or taken away in handcuffs or... My mother was fucking right about you, you know that? Sniffling true life with your head down. I've seen you myself just muttering away at yourself like a halfwit. Like one of those uh, fucking idiots from your marina car place. She understands pain. Well, it turns out you cannot take the inbred girl out of the middle. What was I thinking? Come on, what are we doing in here? Everybody's outside waiting for us. RTE are outside waiting for us. You choose now with a 10 to 6 to have an existential crisis. Leave me alone. I'm not going to do that. 
150 euro on no our minibar. A cup of tea. Earlier, at the hotel, after dinner, everyone was finishing the tea and coffee, and I couldn't stand the noise of the cups hitting the saucers, and the click clinking of the spoons and all the sipping. I went outside just for a little air, just for a minute, just to get away from the noise and the clinking. I could see myself in the window. And it was the first time in three weeks there was an epoxy camera over my shoulder. And I didn't recognise myself. I leaned in to let the street light hit me. I was planning on going back, but I needed some lipstick. I kept it here. In the bottles. I could just make out my face and lips. Christchurch behind me. It looked different in the dark. Lonely. Secretive. So you're a poet now, yeah? I coloured in my bottom lip. And then the top. Two traced my bottom lip from right to left. And the second time right to left. I rubbed and smushed my lips together to get on the top lip and even all over. What are you talking about, Suzanne? My granny used to do her lips like this in the hall mirror. My mother does it too. I used to watch her getting dressed to go out. And now I do it. And I wanted to cry right there on the street because my granny is dead, my mother is far away, and it turns out I was wrong about the biggest thing in my life. And how can I think I can be right about anything else? You're talking some fucking shit now, Suzanne. So I walked away. Look, we have to get back. You've had your fun, you made your point, I get it. But you can't have fear and anxiety and suspicion and a lack of trust well, in your entire life. Sometimes you just have to let go and push yourself into free fall, okay? You said, let's have this adventure. When what you meant is, you didn't have a clue about where we are or what's going to happen next. What's the point of an adventure? You asked me to marry you because you didn't know what to do next. And neither did I. So I said yes. So that when I die, it doesn't seem like the most important thing in my life was having my appendix out. You're trying to humiliate me. You came back from being away, do you remember? When you come back, I said to you, you've come home. And you said yes. But I don't think so. 
Because when I called you that time you were in Manchester, I felt something that happened. I heard it on the phone. You said, I don't know. But don't you know, I said. I don't know if I can come back. Because you're falling in love with someone, I said. Because you're falling for someone. Don't trivialize it, you said. And I asked you if you had a love affair. You said no. You're falling for someone else. You said no. You've had a fling, a one night stand. No, you said. I don't believe it. Believe what you want, you said. And you came home. But you didn't. in your own way. But if in the middle of the night without any warning the ceiling was to suddenly collapse, I'd throw my body over yours to save your life. But I don't think you do the same for me. I don't think that would be your instinct! <laughs> 